Hey everyone, in this module I'm going to be going over some radiation basics. Um, this module is kind of long, but luckily I have a few videos that are going to help explain some things along the way. So let's get started. So you may be wondering, what exactly is radiation? Well, here's a video that's going to explain in more detail. In order to understand the radiation hazard, a brief explanation of basic atomic structure in radiation terminology is needed. The atom is a basic unit of matter, or the simplest structure of an element. Atoms consist of varying combinations of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus, or center portion of an atom, while the electrons orbit around the nucleus. If the combination of protons and neutrons is not correct, the nucleus will have too much energy. An atom with too much energy is unstable or radioactive. These radioactive atoms will try to become stable by giving up their excess energy. This excess energy is emitted in a form of particles or waves and is called ionizing radiation. Not all types of radiation have enough energy to ionize other atoms. For example, radar waves, radio waves, microwaves, and visible light are all types of radiation, but they are non-ionizing radiations. Radioactivity is a term used to describe the spontaneous emission of energy or radiation from a radioactive atom. If a material contains radioactive atoms, it is called radioactive material. If that material is in an unwanted or uncontrolled location, it is referred to as radioactive contamination. Contamination and radiation are not the same. Exposure to radiation will not make you contaminated nor would you become radioactive. If you are exposed to radiation, you do not have the potential to expose other people. Remember, radiation is energy emitted from radioactive atoms. Contamination is material containing radioactive atoms. Let me give you some examples of these concepts. If a radioactive material is properly contained in a package, radiation could still penetrate through the packaging. If you handle that package, you could be exposed to radiation. Once you distance yourself from the package, you would no longer be exposed. However, if the package breaks open and the contents spill onto the floor, the floor would be contaminated. If you stepped in the spilled material and it transferred to your feet, you would then be contaminated and have the potential to spread that contamination as you walk. Keep in mind that the material that is contaminating you is emitting radiation. So you are exposed to radiation as well. Again, radiation is the energy. Contamination is the material. While responding to an incident involving radioactive material, the potential exists for you to receive exposure to radiation or become contaminated. In other modules, you'll learn how to reduce your exposure and control the spread of contamination. So to better understand radiation, think of radiation like a light bulb, where the radiation um, is the light, which is the energy. And then when you compare the two, a light bulb is the source of light, just like the radioactivity is the source of radiation. When dealing with radiation, it is important to understand that radiation can be ionizing and non-ionizing. Non-ionizing radiation is not typically an issue, as it does not break down the molecular bonds in an atom as it passes through objects. On the other hand, ionizing radiation, such as x-rays, is more energetic, and when it passes through an object, it will break down those molecular bonds, causing changes in any living cells. This is important to remember because the radioactive material used in the nuclear plants, such as ours here in Hamilton County, um, is ionizing radiation. So how is radiation detected? Well, radiation is difficult to detect because we cannot see, smell, hear, or feel radiation. We have to utilize special equipment in order to detect radiation. This equipment includes Geiger counters and dosimeters. When discussing radiation, there are several measurement terms that you will need to know. These are radioactivity, exposure, absorbed, and dose. Each measures something different and has its own measuring unit. a video describing some of the radiological terms that you will need to know as you when we are near a source of radiation such as radioactive material we can be exposed to the radiation emitted without becoming contaminated by the source one way to think about exposure is to consider x-rays 
When you have a chest x-ray, for example, you are exposed to radiation, but you don't become contaminated with radioactive material. We can reduce our exposure to radiation if we are shielded in some way, for example, by standing behind a concrete wall or keeping the radioactive source inside of a lead container. To become contaminated, radioactive material must get on the skin or clothing or inside of the body. For example, consider a dirty bomb that is a conventional explosive such as dynamite that is laced with radioactive material. When the device is detonated, people could not only be injured by the blast, but become contaminated. External contamination refers to radioactive material on the outside of the body. When a person becomes externally contaminated, simply removing the clothing can remove as much as 90% of the contamination. Gently washing the skin and the hair can remove most of that which remains. If a person ingests or inhales radioactive material, it can become incorporated in the organs of the body, and this is called internal contamination. Depending on the type of radioactive material which someone is contaminated with, certain medications can be administered to accelerate the rate at which the material is eliminated from the body. Examples of such medications include Prussian blue and DTPA. So along with measurement terms, there are also radiation terms that you will need to remember. Dose is the amount of radiation actually absorbed by your body and is measured in rem or millirem. Um, each year we receive a dose of about 620 millirem just from our surrounding um, environment. Exposure is when you're close enough to a radiation source for an extended period of time that the radiation actually begins to affect you. And then contamination is any radioactive material in an unwanted place. So on this side, I have a chart showing different sources of radiation exposure. The earth tones are the natural sources and the blue tones are man-made sources. So every day we are exposed to several different types of radiation. Um, approximately 82% of our everyday exposure comes from natural sources such as radon, cosmic, and terrestrial. Radon is the number one source of radiation exposure. Um, radon is a gas released from the ground, and while the gas itself is not actually that dangerous, the decayed product called daughter is hazardous, especially if it's trapped indoors. Um, cosmic radiation is produced through solar flares as you increase altitude. There is less air to shield the radiation, therefore the radiation uh, you receive is higher. So for example, you are exposed to more radiation when you are flying than when you are at sea level. We can receive internal contamination through food that we eat, such as seafood. Um, medical exposure comes from things like um, x-rays and scat cat scans. Um, if you are being treated for cancer, you will receive some kind of nuclear medicine, such as radiotherapy. And then industrial and occupational exposures come from everyday items, such as smoke detectors. Um, it is also interesting to note that 0.1% includes radiation produced by nuclear plants. As I discussed earlier, ionizing radiation is the most dangerous. As it passes through an object, it can break down molecular bonds in atoms, which can lead to changes in living cells. These changes can cause different mutations in your cells that can lead to several different medical issues, such as cancer. There are three main types of ionizing radiation. These are alpha, beta, and gamma. And on the next slide, I will have a video for you that's gonna go into this more in depth. Alpha particles may be ejected from the nucleus of an atom during radioactive decay. They are relatively heavy and travel only about an inch in air. They can also be easily shielded by a single sheet of paper, for example and cannot even penetrate the outer dead layer of skin. So they pose no danger when their source 
is outside the human body. Beta particles are essentially electrons emitted from the nucleus of a radioactive atom. They are lighter than alpha particles and can travel farther in air up to several yards. Very energetic beta particles can penetrate up to half an inch through skin and into the body. They can be shielded with less than an inch of material, such as plastic. In the case of lower energy beta particles, the outer layer of clothing can act as an effective shield. Gamma rays, the most energetic part of the electromagnetic spectrum, can be emitted from the nucleus during radioactive decay. They are able to travel tens of yards or more in air and easily penetrate the human body. Shielding this penetrating type of radiation requires thick, dense material, such as several inches of lead or concrete. Neutrons can be released from the nucleus of an atom during a fission reaction, such as within a nuclear reactor or upon detonation of a nuclear weapon. Neutrons, like gamma rays, are very penetrating, and several feet of concrete is needed to shield against them. As the video explained, alpha radiation is the largest and slowest of the radioactive particles. Because of this, it can be blocked by a single sheet of paper or even your skin. Unfortunately, since the particles are large and only travel a short distance, they can be the most hazardous if they get inside your body. Beta radiation is a slight hazard since it only can be shielded by thicker materials such as plastic. If your skin is exposed to large amounts over time, you can receive a skin burn that's similar to a sunburn. Much like alpha particles, beta radiation can cause serious damage if it is taken internally. Gamma radiation is the most hazardous because it can only be shielded by thick, dense materials such as concrete or lead. Because it can travel through almost anything, it does not pose a large threat if taken internally. In Hamilton County, we have several sources of ionizing radiation. For example, medical and veterinary clinics use um, radiation for x-rays, irradiators, and radiotherapy. Many research facilities, such as universities and industrial companies, may possess um, radioactive materials. One source of radiation people may forget about is transportation. Hamilton County has several major transportation systems running through it, such as highways and railways. At any time, radioactive material could be transported through our county. Um, if one of these transport vehicles is wrecked, we could have a radiological emergency on our hands. And as most of you know, we have two nuclear facilities in our area. We have Sequoia, which is located here in Hamilton County, and Watts Bar, which is in Bradley County. And that brings us to the end of this module. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on the number on the screen.